<laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> so the long, the long overdue and highly anticipated. 317-2 tier list. Now, before we begin here, obviously, I'm not going to try and take up too much of your time. The whole list is right here for your eyes to water on. This is my own personal opinion, so take it for what it's worth. And this is only the ships, in my opinion, that would be most likely to see combat. Either most likely in fights or uh, designed also for combat. So for example, we noticed that we have two-seater fighters. So nothing in this list right here is above two seats in the sense that, you know, uh, obviously you can have more people in a prowler. But there's only two pilots that fly the prowler and there's no turrets. So ground team aside, it's a two-man ship. So where do we start? I think we'll just start at the top and work our way down. Because usually a lot of these tier list videos, they start from the bottom. But I mean, let's be honest, folks. Starting from trash is never a good thing. <laughs> but in 317.2, we have a new meta. And that new meta looks a lot like Gladius, Two-Man Hurricanes, and Blades. That, right now, are the strongest ships out there at the moment. The Blade, obviously, the reason why it went from being relatively low on the list on the previous one, from being Echo slash E tier, all the way up to S tier, is because what ended up happening was the Blade got its weapons buffed, not much of the weapons changed in terms of their overall stats, other than the simple fact that the weapons on the blade now go 1400 meters per second. Which means two things. One, the blade can dump its magazine faster than any other light fighter its class and do the same amount of damage, so it has higher burst damage. Two, it has more damage per shot, so when you do hit a shot, it does more damage, breaks stuff. And three, it has more Gs than the arrow, the gladius, and a lot of the other light fighters have. So it not only can chase, has high top speed, but it has really strong thrusters and the best weapons in its class. Leaving the Vandal Blade, the S tier number one single seat dogfighter. However, there are ships that are still relatively close to this ship. The Gladius does inch its way into S tier just simply because it's two shields, it's ridiculously high turn rate, it's decent assortment of weapons, and just all around good fighter. That's why I always recommend the Gladius to be the number one fighter for when you're either starting off in the game or you're an experienced pilot and you want to kind of see what you can do. Because the Gladius, considering it's a Squadron 42 ship, is most likely going to maintain its gold standard and its ability to engage in dogfights. Probably going to be one of the ships that's going to be looked at first. So you're always going to have a great platform with the Gladius. So for a new pilot out there, I always recommend buying a Gladius. And then to round up our S tier, we have my favorite heavy fighter, the Hurricane. The Hurricane... I mean, what's to say, folks? What's to say about the Hurricane? She's fast, faster than any other heavy fighter. She's got four size three guns with a hundred rounds each on each gun uh, and two fixed size fours. And the beautiful thing about the, the uh, Hurricane is it has its size two shield and it has the most G-forces available to it when it comes to its maneuverability, which allows it to engage and disengage, which is a, which is a ability that stuff like the Scorpius which you can see lower on our list here, simply does not have. So, in a one versus one setting where the ship has a crew, the S tier Hurricane inches out. Really the only thing that can fight another Hurricane is another Hurricane or a really cracked Gladius or Blade pilot. But it's best to take two Blades to take out a Hurricane or two Gladius if you want to make sure you get the kill. It's still going to be a hard fight though. Okay, going into A tier, which is uh, we're coming down from the heavens and we're slowly descending into reality with ships that, um, you know, skilled pilots like to fly that aren't the meta, but are kind of still the meta, is we have the M50, which basically I can only describe as an angry... Can't say that now. I would be cancelled. It's, like it's like an angry chipmunk, really, is what it is. It's like, you know, when you're a kid, you know, and you get those chipmunks running around, and every once in a while you catch one and it bites you and it hurts real bad, but not enough to kill you. 
That's kind of what the M50's like, but you can never catch it. It's always just bouncing around, being tiny and annoying. But with crazy high accelerations, two size one shields, more than the arrow, CIG, um, the M50 wraps up the eight tier pretty, pretty substantially. Eight tier is very comfortably sitting with the M50. Then we move into the arrow, my personal favorite, which hasn't moved since the last tier list because we still have one size one shield, CIG. <laughs> Uh, the only reason the arrow isn't in S tier is because it only has one size one shield. Uh, and it's the biggest hang up the arrow has because it's inevitable, like it's it's maneuverability increased over stuff like the Gladius and the Blade. It's just simply not enough to make up for that second size one shield. So until the meta shifts, which means the meta shifts to maybe a different kind of style or a different kind of weapon balance, the arrow sits comfortably in A tier. Then we get to the Warden, which basically is a Sentinel without an EMP. You put a gunner on a warden and you know what you're doing. You have your basics down pat. The Vanguard Warden can really seriously damage some people. So I think people have been sleeping on these Vanguards for a while and there's a lot of folks out there. And I mean a lot of people who fly heavy fighters, including Vanguards, solo and they wonder why they have such a hard time. If you're going to fly a Vanguard, please bring a gunner. It'll augment you a lot more than you might realize. It'll also help get the small annoying stuff off you like M50s and allow people to fight you in a range and in a way where the Vanguard Sentinel and the Vanguard can excel. Sentinel is still A tier with its EMP. Thank God EMPs have been nerfed. So the Sentinel is not S tier anymore, but it's just up there with its Warden friend and it's a slightly more maneuverable, although less tanky version of the Warden. But if you're catch the Sentinel, if you if you if a sentinel catches you and you're not paying attention or you make a mistake on a bad turn you're gonna eat those you're gonna eat those four size three repeaters plus that size four uh and it's not gonna be good for you next we have the gladiator which a lot of folks have been sleeping on and again understand the situation we're talking about here it's a one ship versus one ship scenario the gladiator is a serious threat if it has its gunner People have been sleeping on this thing because they haven't been flying it much. Not a great ship in atmosphere, but with five, sorry, four size five torpedoes, two, two size three guns for the pilot and two size three guns for the turret gunner, wrapping up four size three guns with over 200 rounds. You basically can fire for days. So the Gladiator has been has been kind of a dark horse for a while. In space, she's extremely deadly and lethal and is a very great choice for any kind of... Uh, group engagement strategy when it comes to taking out large targets don't sleep on the gladiator you get a good turret gunner and a good pilot in that thing and that thing can make absolutely ridiculous kills more than the hornet it's basically a better hornet with torpedoes although it has slightly less turn rate and finally to wrap up this tier in a class is the razor lx which is the two size one shields although this is the razor uh normal razor in this picture but that's the razor ex or lx the luxury version which has the two size one shields which is a buff from what it's previously at which was one size one it's basically a better m50 with more acceleration a thinner profile the same shields and the same weapons so basically a better m50 okay Moving into B tier, which is your, what I can only describe as the the wannabe dogfighter tier. <laughs> Ships that want to be good and are designed to be good, but they're not. <laughs> uh, Aegis Avenger, Stalker, Titan, whatever the heck, whichever one you pick, they're all pretty much the same. One has an EMP, but it doesn't affect the Avenger Titan's win-loss ratio that much. So in the reality, all the Aegis variants are sitting comfortably in B tier. Which isn't terrible to sit in. It's competitive. It has a chance to kill some stuff. But I just don't see it being a viable choice in a lot of fights. It's very thin-skinned. And although it can be very fast, its turn rate is a bit low. But with two size threes and a size four fixed, you can do some work with this thing. Next, the Mustang, which I've been very vocal about when I've been streaming. The Mustang has been a great fighter. It's been a great fighter for a long time. And it's also... Out of all the rookie ships, my personal favorite. Then the Hornet, which is an absolutely heartbreaking story. I don't know why the Hornet is in, you know, B tier, but she is. And this would be the F7C, not the F7CM, because the F7CM I would put in a lower tier in C. But because, in my opinion, the F7CM should be in a tier higher, we didn't put it in this list. Because if you're going to fly a Hornet, 
fly the F7C. There is no benefit to flying an F7CM at the moment. So if you're going to fly a Hornet series of any type, Tracker, Ghost, whatever, use an F7C. Use the single seat version. There's no benefit to flying the F7CM. Although taking the components off the Super and onto the F7C, now we're talking. Then the Saber, again, beats here. Great fighter, looks nice, flashy, sexy, can't turn worse shit. <laughs> you know, uh, hopefully we'll get a buff to medium fighters at some point, but alas, it is not today. The Aurora, surprisingly, makes its debut in this, in this tier as well because of a small profile, decent thrusters, four size three guns, sorry, size one guns, which have actually quite a high rate of fire. And if you're using the Legionnaire, you get two size twos and two size ones, which would be this one in this tier list here. However, the differences between the Legionnaire, the ES, the LS, and I believe the MR are not vast enough. If you fly the MR or the ES or the LX or whatever which one you fly, all the Auroras typically fly relatively the same and are relatively just as tough with the same amount of shields. So whether you're flying one or the other, with a small profile and good management of your movement, the Aurora can make a very comfortable fighter in B tier. Then we have the Archimedes, which I can only describe as the flying... I can't say that. <laughs> Dildo. Anyway, so it basically a flying pleasure tool. And uh, the nose on that thing is going to block your view every time you fly it. So it's half fun, half pain, because you finally get on your target and you can't see it because your nose is too big. <laughs> However, with four size one guns, same as the Aurora, really high fire rate, exceptional ability to move around the environment, but with only size one shields or one size one shield and almost no health pool, you have to be perfect. But if you can be, it could be a pointed deadly fighter. Next is the 85X. So if you're late for work and you work, let's say, I don't know, downtown New York and you have a nice business suit and you want to be able to get there, kill a whole bunch of hornets and still make it time for dinner, use the 85X. I can only describe as the douchebag's ride. <laughs> and finally, we have, sorry, not finally. And next we have the, the Scorpius, the X-Wing otherwise known as the sex swing. But basically, this thing sits and beats here because of two reasons. One, if you get close to the Scorpius within 200 meters, uh, its guns can't gimbal onto where you're actually shooting because it's too it's too far, like it's too close to the weapon system. Like the, the ship can't get its guns onto the target. Uh, so if you're close to 200 meters, you're pretty much safe unless he's got a turret gunner, but even then you can still move around. And you only have 12 Gs. 12 Gs. 12 fucking G forces. A prospect has 10.5. 10! A prospect has 10.5! CIG, are you listening? <laughs> it's too slow. And it be and because it be it's too slow and it's too physically big. Stuff like the M50, the Arrow, the Wardens, the Razors, the Gladiators, the Hurricanes, the Blades, all these ships above in this tier can simply walk around it at range and pick it full of holes. And it basically can't do a thing about it. As long as you stay outside of 800 meters, you've basically got the kill. It's just a matter of time. And lastly, we have the Talon, which is a really great ship. In a team environment as well, the Talon is exceptionally deadly. However, in a one versus one dogfight, whether it's between another ship, the Talon struggles with its ability to kill because it doesn't have very heavy guns. Its guns run out of charge very quickly and it takes a decent amount of time to charge them back. So you don't have to just be perfect. You have to be exceptionally perfect in the Talon to gain the advantage in 1v1 and secure the kill. So that's why it's in B tier. Next C tier, we have the 325A, the Nomad, the Buccaneer, the Merlin, the Banu, the Cartuol, the Drake, the Hawk. Boys, now what am I going to say here? 325A is made of sandpaper and brittle. The uh, Nomad is the Tesla space truck. The Buccaneer is a piece of shit. <laughs> the Merlin, it's, it's the fucking, it's the Merlin. The Banner Defender, the, it's, the Banner Defender is just, 
it's physically too big. It can't really move that well. Its turn rate's too low, and its weapon loadout's really not that powerful, which puts it nice in the C tier. Anything in the B tier can have an easy time killing the Banner Defender, and that's let alone anything in S and A. Cartuol is a bit of a strange one. Cartuol is actually almost S tier when it comes to engaging in a group setting. However, in a single fight where it's just you and another person, the Cartuol has exceptionally low win rates because it's so big. It's the equivalent of stacking two vanguards on top of each other in terms of its profile. Even though it has a very high turn rate and has high G-forces, a good pilot's not going to let you gain any kind of positional advantage, which puts the card to wall nice in C tier, almost D tier, considering how big it is. Next is the Drake Cutlass. Again, you put a turret gunner on there, you put the VTOL on max, and you move yourself in the best way you can, you get your turn rate on, you follow your basics. The Drake ships can actually do some pretty good damage, and they can also be some pretty fun ships to fly. Although, for the vast majority of people, the Drake Cutty sits nicely in C tier, because you take... <laughs> It takes a long time and it takes a special kind of person to train for quite a while to get the Drake Cutlass to effectively become a dangerous ship on the field. And lastly, we have the Hawk. Just because the Hawk... The Hawk looks pretty, but it's brittle and it can't turn its nose to save its life. <laughs> As well, the cockpit. I don't know who made that cockpit, but they hate pilots because flying a ship where you're basically looking at your target like this. Come on. Come on now. Next is D tier, which, I mean, pretty self explanatory, folks. If you're flying a ship in D tier, count your blessings. But you got the Terrapin, which, if you slam that baby into VTOL mode, I mean, you can tank for days, but it's tough to get a kill. <laughs> the Glaive. Good luck turning onto anything that has a pulse. The 100i, basically made of hope streams and toilet paper. The Pisces, although it is a good combat vessel, uh, you can literally half magazine shoot the Pisces and it'll die. And only has one size, one shield. So when I say you have to be perfect with the Pisces, I mean, you've got to be perfect. <laughs> Next is the Shrike, which is basically just a shitty Talon with way too many missiles. And the Drake Herald, which... I can only describe as Need for Speed mixed with Fast and Furious mixed with The Expanse. Except it can't turn and it's not made for combat. <laughs> and then you have the Mantis, which again isn't really meant to directly engage anybody, although it is a great interdictor. And the Eclipse, which is not meant to engage people with guns. It's meant to hit stuff with torpedoes, which, by the way, hitting people with dumbfire torpedoes is probably the biggest dopamine rush you will ever have in Star Citizen. Join. It's away! It's a hit! It's down! Yay. Stay tuned for more. <laughs> and wrapping up the E tier list is the Prowler. Because fuck it, why not? We'll put the Prowler in there. The Misc Reliant Tana or the Core. I didn't put the other two variants in here because they really are designed for combat. I believe the other one is a camera ship of some type, but I mean, let's be honest here. If your camera ship's getting into a fight, Things have gone horribly, horribly wrong. <laughs> and then the Freelancer, another space pleasure tool. And uh, the uh, the Raven. The Aegis Raven. The Aegis Raven is the is on the is on the cusp of greatness. But with its two M like with its two EMPs and two size three guns. The problem with the Raven is it's basically a kind of slower version of the Saber, although it does have EMPs, which are exceptionally frustrating to deal with for some ships. The reality is you can just disengage it, re-engage it, and keep fighting it until eventually it falls apart, which is the problem with the Raven. Although a good Raven pilot can make your life absolutely miserable. I mean, truly. Uh, next, we have the Mustang Omega, which is the racer, which again is just two size one guns and way too many G-forces to deal with. <laughs> I mean, if you can get this thing in a dogfight and win, hey man, that's great. But if you're going up against a trained aero pilot or Gladius, well, I'll see you at the funeral. And then obviously the 350R, which is basically a super overpriced piece of scaffolding and cardboard because anything hits this thing, and I mean anything hits this thing, and it falls apart immediately. <laughs> and finally!
finally, to wrap up the list, ladies and gentlemen, we have the, the Pisces, which has two size one guns, one size one shield, and less hit points than a dirty piece of toilet paper. I love the Pisces. But if you get inside that thing, your life is going to be as short as a red shirt on the original Star Trek series. Hi, bye, see you later. <laughs> and then also, to wrap this list up finally, the Ares Ion and Inferno. Yeah. Thanks, CIG. <laughs> but, in you know, to be honest, I mean, they're not technically supposed to be dogfighters. But when I say these things get killed by everything on this list, I mean they get killed by everything on this list. <laughs> Including the Pisces. <laughs> Too low of a turn rate. Guns that just simply won't apply. <sighs> in a turn rate that can literally watch yourself grow, like you can watch yourself grow gray hairs waiting for that thing to turn around the Ares, ion and inferno sit comfortably in fail tier and they don't seem to be coming out of that spot anytime soon but folks that's all i got for you today i hope i made this tier list at least enjoyable to watch i'm sure some of you skipped right to the end and if you did i'm watching you guys <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank you so much guys for coming by this is my opinion on the tier list this is my opinion on the meta ships that are currently in 17.2 and again these are ships that all have crews so if it's Drake it's got a gunner if it's a Sentinel it's got a gunner if it's a Hurricane it's got a gunner so please don't take this list and be like Hurricane's supposed to be number one and then not bring a gunner because um, you're going to have a bad time <laughs> thank you so much folks Hope to see you guys all up for the next YouTube and the next stream. My name is Avenger1, and I'll see you next time. Oh, and by the way, stay tuned for a final message at the end of this video. There's something that hopefully you, you guys can help with, and it, uh, it hits close to home with us in the squadron here. See you next time. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope you found it entertaining. On many occasions, we do the best for the ones we love. In this situation, for me, it is difficult to talk about. However, I believe it's necessary. One of my pilots, uh, Avenger 3, the Zenister, has recently had an incident. And I believe that we all here on this YouTube channel can lend a hand and really make a difference. Zenister's sister, Sharon, has gone missing and has been missing for almost two months. Normally, these situations can be mitigated with police and investigators. But in this situation, it's suspected of even human trafficking. It's a dark subject and it's difficult for most people to wrap their heads around, considering most of us will never experience this kind of darkness. But we have decided to start a GoFundMe to keep a private investigator on retainer to find out what has happened to Zen's sister. Zen's agreed that if his sister is found, to return all the money donated, which will be put towards a private investigator to finding out his whereabouts or her whereabouts. Or if people want to, if his sister is found, to donate everything to a kid's charity. The link will be in the description on the video and we'll keep you updated and posted on any news we hear. Thank you for considering this. It's not expected, but always appreciated. I believe this is a good opportunity for anybody willing to want to help. Even a few dollars might go a long way. Hopefully we find her and hopefully nothing bad has happened. But I ask this on anybody who has the willingness to help that we appreciate it. And don't feel pressured or obligated to do so, but only do so out of the kindness of your own heart. Think if this was your sister, what would you do? Thank you for listening, and thank you for all the love and support everyone has shown me and everyone here in the squadron. You are all fantastic people. 
thank you so much for everything you have done.